So I thought this was my own original idea, but as it turns out, if we'd also had the same idea as me, so this is kind of awkward, but you know what? Fuck it. You know what they say? It's not unoriginal if it's a complete coincidence. Also, if his video happens to be out by the time this one is, it'll be linked in the description and you can go watch him talk about Shadow. Anyway, yes, I'm going to view every single episode that Shadow has had on Death Battle. All three of them. Let's just get to it. Sayonara! As a season 1 episode, I think certain liberties need to be given to Vegeta vs Shadow, but even without those in mind, there are things that do make it stand out. Now, one issue is the analysis. Not including stats and numbers is one thing, given the time period, but this episode also includes blatantly wrong information. Like saying Vegeta can turn the Big Bang attack into a beam. Or saying Super Saiyan is near indestructible when it's actually like the third weakest transformation a Saiyan can have behind Great Ape and Kaioken. Or that it's a 500% boost when it's a 50 times boost, not a 5 times boost. Or further saying Super Saiyan 2 is another 500% boost when it's actually a 2 times boost on Super Saiyan. But yeah, it's pretty much just Vegeta. Shadow doesn't have enough said about him to really be considered bad. Although the conclusion is also pretty bare bones. It's really just Vegeta can take beatings from characters weaker than Super Shadow so he'd outlast and also he has a loud mouth. That's really about all I'd expect from Season 1. And of course the animation looks really rough. Sprites are fuzzy, lip syncing looks bad, the Vegeta sprites don't really match Shadow, and they're also not really that great. However, the content of the fight is actually quite good. Vegeta vs Shadow is more of a comedy-esque sort of battle, and that gives it more of an identity than either of the other Shadow episodes. It has a uniqueness to it that other battles don't really have, or at least a uniqueness that's uncommon to Death Battle. The fight actually plays out very differently to most. Shadow actually goes super very quickly because he needs to, while Vegeta goes super quickly because he's arrogant. Instead of the common trend of having a character go super while they're being pressured and are using it to break out, instead it's more tailored to the individual personalities of the characters. Shadow doesn't let himself get pressured nearly as much as most other fighters when they bust out a super form. Rather, he realizes he has no time to fuck around and goes super immediately. Vegeta, however, is so full of himself and arrogant that he uses it just because he can instead of because he needs to. From there on, the fight takes, honestly, what's kind of a similar vibe to Saitama vs. Boris from One Punch Man. Obviously not nearly as good as that, but then I can maybe count the amount of anime fights that rival the animation quality of Saitama vs. Boris on one hand. But in terms of choreography, it's mostly one guy really going ham on the other, with probably one of the best conveyances of speed out of any Sonic episode, which is kind of sad, but you consider how many there are, and that this is the first. The fight is less about trying to build stakes, making you wonder who will win, but more so a case of, well we know Shadow can't die in his super form, and we know Vegeta can take a lot of punishment, so you can just sit back and enjoy the two throwing a bunch of shit at each other. In fact, Vegeta actually does get a chance to punish Super Shadow. Oh hey, both fights also involve a climactic moment with the moon. And yeah, Vegeta punching the moon down is one of the coolest things in the season, it's one of those, it's one of the most raw instances of strength. You don't need to have something be super cosmic in scale to feel big. I mean, He-Man throwing that mountain is one of the most impactful scenes in a death battle. And that's just a mountain. Hell, honestly, even Shadow teleporting it has some really good sound and visual design, as well as good build-up to make it seem impactful. And then there's the death, too. As simple as it is, Shadow's quiet uh-oh in response to the realization that he's been wasting too much time is fucking hilarious. And the suddenness of it, as well as just the smoke that's left, leaves it having an impact. Not like a Luther vs Iron Man style impact, but a funny impact that makes a death stick with me way more than the other two deaths in these episodes. But let's talk about one of the best aspects of this fight generally, the writing and the voice acting. As I said, this episode is focused more on comedy, and a big part of that comes from the great voice acting and writing. In my opinion, it has the most solid voice acting out of all three episodes. Obviously, Lanny Pator absolutely kills it as Vegeta. He has one of the most recognizable voices for the character period, official or otherwise and he manages to deliver everything fantastically. His screams, his confusion, his arrogance, even just his blunt, snide remarks. Oh, hey! I can do that too! Wow! What a ripoff! Shadow, however, was voiced by Takahata101, and I think he does a really good job as well. His voice has the sort of gruffness that I like in a Shadow voice, that classic style of voice, you know? I think he delivers both the cocky arrogance of the character and his shouts very well, and he actually brings way more hype with Chaos Blast than the other episode with it. As for the writing, obviously Vegeta is written like his abridged counterpart, which means he gets good lines, good delivery, and a great dose of completely unfounded arrogance despite most of the fight involving him being punished. And I understand some people might dislike that it's the abridged Vegeta and want a more actual, you know, original Vegeta sort of feel, but I honestly think it's fine. I think for a comedy style battle it kind of works, and while I wouldn't want to see this being done too often in the future, I don't generally mind it. 
Shadow, however, I want to note is probably being played more true to his character than the other portrayals. Shadow being edgy as a character trait is something that's more so a meme than it is legitimately how he is as a character. Shadow's main traits once he comes into his own as a character is being arrogant and not wanting to deal with people's shit. In that regard, I think Shadow works. He doesn't say anything overly edgy and he doesn't have any angst in the fight. He actively smart mouths Vegeta and outside of an out of character shit is relatively accurate. I went into this review planning to give Vegeta vs Shadow something of a 5 out of 10, but thinking about how much love and care went into this as well as the content of the episode makes up for the lacking presentation and makes me feel like giving it a 7 out of 10. And I'm dead serious, it's charm as a season 1 episode, the great banter in writing, the fun choreography and the great voice acting come together to make this one of the most fun episodes to watch on the season and a great time overall that I'd highly recommend checking out again. Surely bringing Shadow back would make for a great episode, right? Right? Sayonara. Oh no, what the fuck happened, guys? Shadow vs Mewtwo is one of the worst episodes in this series, and that's not an exaggeration. Starting with the analysis, it's fine. There's nothing special, but nothing insulting. It's an analysis that's bog standard, with one or two jokes I found somewhat nice, with a really cool ending Mewtwo clip that goes on for a little too long. But then the fight comes, and... What the fuck? Okay, so first off, the positives. Shadow has some amazing rigging. Legitimately, some of the rigging for Shadow actually looks smoother and better animated than Ryuko vs Shadow. He moves so smoothly and he looks so good while doing it. And Mewtwo's voice acting is passable. That was it, that's the positives. If this was a Biffweed review, that would be the 3 second long positive thing leading into the rest of the Batgirl vs Spider-Gwen review. As for the negatives, well, let's start with what was previously my favourite thing. Voice acting and writing. Mewtwo is fine, as I said. He sounds a little bit off, but he gets the job done. Shadow, however, Takahata was specifically, explicitly told to voice it bad. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like there's a point where if an episode isn't portraying itself as a joke, you shouldn't do things intentionally bad as if it was a joke. Shadow vs Vegeta was very open from the beginning that the fight is a joke. However, Shadow vs Mewtwo opens up in as if it was a serious animation. But then Shadow starts talking. What the fuck even is his performance? He has two lines that I like. His Chaos Control, which has a lot of grunt behind it, and his Why Am I Glowing, because it's kind of funny. And I'm also willing to believe that's completely ironic enjoyment too. The writing is bad. Mewtwo is more like Shadow than Shadow is. He's snide and sarcastic. He makes a snappy comeback to Shadow as well. Shadow is intentionally written like shit. Why the hell, man? To think that this episode is the one that Ben made that matchup chart for Mewtwo for. And as it turns out, this whole episode was a shit post on Shadow. Keep that in mind whenever you make one of these charts. It was originally used for an episode that exists solely to shit on one of the characters. Speaking of shitting on Shadow, he lands one direct hit all fight, and while I love that it's a reference to the Shadow vs Silver Chaos Control neck kick, it drags on way longer than it needs to, and it's the only attack he lands. Now I'd be okay if this was like Silver Samurai vs the Shredder, where they both land very few hits but the ones they do are impactful, but Mewtwo bodies Shadow's attempts, hits him with his own attack, hits him with a spoon, and then just hits him a few more times before killing him. It's such a slap in Shadow's face in every way but a literal one, what the fuck even? Also, this Mewtwo is... Oh, it's disgusting. What the fuck is with his shoulders? And like, there's not even much more to say because that's all the episode is. It's Mewtwo hitting Shadow a few times. But unlike Shadow vs Vegeta, where Vegeta actually landed some blows and there was fun banter and it was clearly portraying itself as a comedic narrative ending in the punching bag actually pulling back a clutch win, this comes off as straightforward clapping on Shadow. This is an insult to Shadow the Hedgehog and an insult to my favourite Pokemon of all time. I really dislike this episode. It is a flat 1 out of 10 because while it does have good elements, the sheer level of insult and disdain that this episode shows for one of the characters in it is just horrible. And what's funny is that I kind of thought when I first saw this shot, oh I'm glad it's not Silver because Ben Singer would have made the episode specifically despite Silver. And as it turns out, while I wasn't totally wrong, he did make the episode despite someone. Also, the backgrounds aren't even finished. What the fuck is this? This animation is literally not finished. What is this? Nathan vs. Lara? Sayonara, dipshit! Now, Shadow vs. Ryuko, the new kid on the block. How does it stack up? Once again, putting Shadow against a character I really care about. Well, once again with Gusto, the analysis. It's boring. It's not great. I don't find it nearly as enjoyable as Yoda vs. King Mickey, but... Hearing Wiz, a guy who horndogs over Sailor Moon and Zuko, talk about menstruation and an underage girl's thematic relationship with having periods was mega cringe, and I feel cringe just saying those words. There's also some weirdness both with how Senkets is barely brought up as a character and has a weird cutaway scene that doesn't really fit. Though speaking of cutaways, what the hell were the cutaways to Wiz and Boomstick? Did they forget to write joke? 
because I think Joke would be good in place where Joke go. It's really strange. Senkets should be a far more major part of Ryuko's analysis given that, you know, they literally are, they, they fight as one. They are teammates. And that's a really important part of her character. Hell, he dies at the end saving her life. Or the really weird fact somehow that Super Shadow blowing up a planet is less impressive than Ryuko blasting a big hole through a bunch of really strong clothes. Or the claim that Alumni Mode Scissor Blades eclipse the planet when they don't? They don't. How big do you think Honoji is? Fuck, they even measured out the blade as 1,017 times larger than a sword they said was 2.5 feet long. Do they think the world is 2,542.5 feet in diameter? Cause it fucking ain't. As for the animation, well, I like that they tried to replicate the feel of Killer Kill with the use of lighting and the sparkles as well as the transformation. But the transformation ends up looking kind of weird. It lacks frames, it's super low in detail, and I think what annoys me most, she doesn't even say Life Fiber Synchronized Kamui Senkets, which is kind of like if Voltron didn't say form feet and legs, form arms and body, and I'll form the head. How often do you hear people say both of those sentences just completely blankly like I just did? I also like Shadow kicking the back of Ryuko's head, it is my favorite part of the episode, and I'm not joking, this is amazing. I also found it really funny when Shadow just pulls out a gun, I kind of wish he fired it, but it's also a bit of like... He just pulled out a- he just pulled a fucking Glock on a 17 year old. There was also a good sense of speed, and I think Jenny Yokobari did a really good job as Ryuko for the most part. Though for me, the best voice actor was somehow Tom Laughlin as Senkets. I mean, he just sounded exactly like the character, and he was very good with every single line. And the last good thing I have to talk about is a cinematic shot of the scissor blades turning alumni mode. I think that looks incredible, the way the big scissor shadows are, are there, and then it zooms out to show them. Sure, they're way bigger than they should be, but it looks so cool. Honestly, everything but the alumni mode scissor blades look really good. It's followed up by the customary Sayonara, which I thought was fine, and then Shadow breaking the blades and dropping Ryuko, which I thought was fine. I don't know, the actual sequence of events and the voice acting was sort of lame, but the visuals were really cool. Now about the negatives, and I feel like this is where a lot of people are going to be upset with the video. The more I watch this fight, the more these come across to me. I know that it's an unpopular opinion, it will be, but I am not going to lie to you about how I felt. First off, and this is not a problem exclusive to this episode, this is just a problem with recent death battles in general that are done in Sprite, I really dislike the expressions. Ryuko's expressions just look off. Not only do they look nothing like Ryuko, but they don't fit the sprites at all. Look at this face here before Senkets talks to Ryuko. That's not Ryuko, that is a troll in Ryuko's skin. And whenever they overlay a moving sprite mouth talking on the sprites instead of just redrawing the sprites to look like they're talking, it looks awful to me. I greatly prefer the way they did Cable vs Booster Gold, with the mouths actually moving on the characters, or, for another example, Ben 10 vs Green Lantern, where the mouths actually look really good. Imagine if they just had these mouths on them. Like, Shadow doesn't look right to me here. His body is in one art style and his mouth is in another, and part of me feels like it's just weird. Shadow sprites have very clearly defined pixels. You can count the amount of pixels that make up the sprite's body based on its proportions and how straight and square it looks, but then this comes in as tiny, tiny pixels It just looks wrong to me. Secondly, there's some issue with the rigging. Not all of it, because while I don't think it looks as smooth as the very brief moments in Mewtwo vs Shadow, Generally, the rigging is really nice. I think Ryuko usually looks really good. Special note to when she gets up off the ground and blasts towards Shadow before he goes super. I think that looks great. But there are some moments it looks a little weird. Like when Shadow is supposedly holding a sword that it doesn't even look like he's holding. I mean, okay, it's fine in this shot, but this shot has Ryuko's hands and her scissor blades not even moving together. It doesn't look like she's holding it at all. But when he pushes her back, you can tell the sword is just a blade without a handle floating over his hand. And here, it doesn't even look like he's got fingers wrapped around it. Another issue I have is the writing. Shadow is fine enough, though his I'm the coolest line at the end was cringeworthy. It doesn't sound like something Shadow would say. But Ryugo doesn't really banter with Shadow much. There's just her taunting him about his sword and him calling her a faker and then the sayonara bit. Aside from that, she mostly just gets mad at Senkets, and this is where I sort of wonder if they really understood Ryugo's character. Not only is Ryugo constantly portrayed as a massive cunt in this entire fight, to the point of trying to kill a guy for cutting her off while also wielding both scissor blades, meaning she must be from near the end of the series, which is weird, but she also pretty much dismisses Senkets, even though since early on in her series, she completely trusted him. She really talked to Senkets the way any normal person would talk to their own best mate. Sure, I can buy her telling Shadow to get fucked, but Senkets? 
When he gives her advice, she calls him stupid. When he's in pain, she gets snide with him. And yet, even at the end, he's screaming for her as they fall to Earth. Also, Ryugo doesn't call out for Senkets like she's worried about him. She's just quiet. If Ryuko was in character, then when Senkets tells her to anticipate him, she'd respond with something like, Got it! Or, Good idea, Senkets! And when he gets hurt, she'd respond with, Sorry! Because her friend has just taken a big cut. Or concern about him. Or she puts her back together and go, You alright? And he'd be like, Yes, I'm fine, Ryuko. Something like that. Oh yeah, so, I, something I forgot to note that I really want to is that when it comes to the writing of the episode, I'm just not a fan of how Ryuko's written. I know I did say it, but I don't think I really emphasized it enough, so this is just going to be like a, a moderately written ramble that's just going to be in the middle of this video for no reason. So as I've said a few times, Ryuko is too aggressive, and I get that some people would be confused by me saying that, but let me explain, because this is actually super important to me as a fan of Ryuko and a fan of good character arcs. Ryuko in this fight is given both Kisaragi and both Scissor Blades, both of which she only got super late in the show. Kisaragi I can sort of wave off, because she only got that right at the end before Sanketz died, but the Scissor Blades, she only had both of them right near the end. Meaning the implication to a dedicated fan of Kill La Kill is that this is Ryuko who's undergone a character arc. A really well written character arc, mind you. However, she's portrayed like she was before her character arc. Now the key argument to this I hear is that this is more iconic for Ryuko and this is how she was from the start. But I think that's kind of dumb. You see, for people who don't really know a character, how they're portrayed generally won't matter. They won't care. Take a look at pretty much everyone who likes Grey vs. Esdeath, they will usually be someone who's not super into Grey vs. Esdeath as characters, so they don't really notice the fact that they've written like shit. However, for people who do care about a character, they'll want to have them portrayed correctly, and as such, they'd most likely have been invested enough in that character to want them to show off how the character was at the end of their arcs. Ryuko being snappy with Senkets is very unlike her. Honestly, even for early in the show, it's unlike her. By like, what, the fifth episode, she was friends with him. But her swearing so much is just weird. And special note, Ryuko screaming sayonara in this situation wouldn't be angry, and she wouldn't say it dipshit at the end. Sayonara dipshit sounds cringe as all hell. Dipshit doesn't work. Dipshit is something you say when someone does something stupid. Shadow's done nothing stupid unless going super mode counts as stupid, which I guess you could argue given he was winning. If she did swear while saying sayonara, she'd be saying sayonara, asshole, like an actual insult, like a general insult to someone as opposed to dipshit, which is, when used unironically, baby's first insult. But also, she wouldn't be angry in this situation, she'd be overconfident. She wouldn't be going, sayonara, dipshit, she'd be like, sayonara because she thinks she's already won. She's just put him between her most powerful attack. Why would she be angry and not overconfident? Because Ryuko as a character, despite what some stupid people think, is neither edgy nor just angry. She commonly shows overconfidence, embarrassment, and surprise in her fights. She is way more than just an angry girl or an edgy girl with a funny-shaped sword who wears skimpy clothes. If she was being blitzed all over by Shadow, then an accurate Ryuko wouldn't be just getting mad. Sure, she'd be angry about it, but she'd also be shocked and surprised by the speed of this guy. She'd be like, what the hell, how is he so fast? She'd be mad, but that'd be in the background behind, what the hell, how am I supposed to hit this guy? And talking to Senkets, they are a team, they talk to each other. Senkets doesn't just talk randomly with Ryuko never initiating the conversation. He's not just... It, it, there is a difference in relationship between Ryuko and Senkets and Dante and Agni and Rudra. It's not a case of, don't talk please, and shut up. That's not how it works with these two. Having rewatched Killer Kill not long ago, it's just, this is not Ryuko to me. This is a flanderization that people who don't watch the show won't notice, and people who do watch the show probably won't be too happy about. For a comparison, imagine if Piccolo was in Death Battle, but he acted like he did at the end of the first half of the manga instead of the way he is now. Imagine Simon the Digger in Death Battle being a wimpy loser like he was at the start of the show instead of the ultra mega chad he was at the end. Imagine Ahsoka Tano in Death Battle being a snippy brat who doesn't know what she's doing half the time instead of the confident but wise knight that she would become later. These are the sort of things that's happened to Ryuka, however people won't notice because they're either not fans, or they think it's fine to have a character be how they were before the main arc of which the entire series revolves around. There is a disconnect I personally feel as a big fan of Kill la Kill who'd struggle to avoid putting it in his top 10 anime of all time. Seeing Ryuko physically wield weapons and forms she had at the end, acting like she did at the start of the series, 
it bothers me. It's a disconnect I feel as a dedicated fan. Not to say there aren't times where I understand doing it. Like, if you went with Vader, you'd go with him when he was a galactic monster, and not him at the end of his arc, but then that's different, because not only is Vader on a whole different level of iconicity to anybody in Death Battle Season 8, aside from Doctor Doom and Luther themselves, he is at that tier of iconicity way, way be beyond Ryuko. Like, several tiers above her, and the tiers aren't even close. That's how iconic Vader is. But also, we don't know what Vader would have been like if he survived through the end of Return of the Jedi, and also, Darth Vader specifically for Anakin is a portion of his life that began with the murder of Windu and, his and ended with his killing of Palpatine. Scorpion, meanwhile, I can see people saying is better as the Spectre form, but once again, Scorpion is significantly more iconic than Ryuko, being the head poster boy of what is arguably the most iconic fighting game of all time, aside from maybe Street Fighter, which is commonly in the public mind, and also very well known as being a major part of why we have game rate like game ratings nowadays, as opposed to Kill la Kill, which it's popular, but it's not on that pedestal. But keep in mind that what's happened here would be like if you took MK11 Hanzo Scorpion, and you made him act like MK9 Asshole Scorpion. It really doesn't make sense, does it? Having a character look and use things they only got near the end, acting like they did way before they had those things. It doesn't work for me as a fan of the character. I don't like it. I can, I can only imagine there are several other examples of this happening in the series history that I don't know about because I don't know the characters very well. But, you know, I mean, that, that is a case where that's my ignorance of some characters where I just wouldn't notice that sort of thing. And, you know, I understand that people are going to complain about that. Speaking of which, you can go back to my regularly scheduled complaining, I'm done with this segment. But good job with the consistency of her raising her hands in the air in the hand and animation, but then when it goes back to sprites, her swords are near the ground and she swings them up a second time. That doesn't look janky as shit. Also, I'm not a big fan of the sound design. Now, this is not Sanji vs. Lee or Metal Sonic vs. Zero level, and there are times where it's fine. But namely those moments when Ryuko hits Shadow a bunch and their two big Dragon Ball style clashes where every hit has almost no impact just sort of bother me. They don't feel impactful in the slightest. And you can barely even hear Shadow's second line when Ryuko first attacks him. Speaking of bad voice acting, Shadow has maybe two lines I like the delivery of. His shut up and his damn. And two that I didn't care for but I can't really say it bad, his behold my power and faker. The rest were pretty bad to me. I didn't like the deliveries and it sounded like he lacked direction. The worst of all being his Chaos Blast. He comes down to deliver the final blow and he's just like, Chaos Blast. In the most boring way possible. The failed Chaos Blast in Shadow vs Vegeta and even my own Shadow vs Goku Black had more effort put in, goddammit. This is a 2021 death battle, put some fucking grunt into your screaming. I get that maybe the intent was for him to just be like, Chaos Blast. But it just sounds so limp dick. Ryuko, meanwhile, didn't have as many lines I disliked the delivery of. In fact, even the lines from her that I didn't like generally were still delivered really well. Her voice acting was legitimately really good. But I didn't like her delivery of Kisaragi. Though honestly, I thought the Kisaragi transformation looked kind of weird. Is it just me? She's charging at Shadow while she says Kisaragi. The sky breaks, which is cool. But then in the next shot, she's suddenly hovering in the air, not moving, and the life fibers are already attached to her? It feels like it's missing a shot where the life fibers is attached to her arms and then attached to her legs before going to this. The following bit with the stars and colors looks really nice, but then there's this. Ugh. Her head is too far down, her head is too big, her expression looks hideous. I get they were going for some sort of perspective shot with like differently sized limbs to get that sort of fisheye lens look, I guess, but... Ooh, this looks rough. Oh, and then despite how good the rest of Ryuko's overall animation is, which is good if not miles for static tier, it looks really bad when she's attacking Shadow after Kisaragi. Ugh. Mining the Kisaragi for all that was hyped up in the transformation, gets off some lasers, dodges some lasers, and then dies. Yeah, I don't like the death either. I think Ryuko's death scream is kind of mixed. I think it kind of sounds good, but also sounds weird and bad at the same time. Uh, it's weird. I think the shot of her screaming looks nice, but it really pales when compared to a similar shot in Naruto vs Ichigo. And Senkatsu's cry for Ryuko is actually really well delivered, but when they die together, he doesn't scream with her. Like, he's not in pain. Now, it's not that he died in re-entry, because he's still on her, she's not naked, and being impaled wouldn't kill him, he just gets no death scream. It's also kind of fucked by Shadow's Gale's Blast. Oh, and also she's fucking... I'm the coolest. That's me, Shadow the Hedgehog. I'm the coolest motherfucker you've ever seen. Grrr. So overall, what did I think of Shadow vs. Ryuko? I thought it was fine. 
I do find myself liking it less and less with each rewatch, and I definitely don't think it needed to be hyped up as much as it was. I am really glad that I dodged the hype for Mickey vs. Yoda, because every time Death Battle hypes something up, I end up disappointed. Though I, I did really want to like this episode. I wanted it to remind me that just because I dislike a matchup doesn't mean I will dislike the episode. And yes, this was no Batgirl vs. Spider-Gwen. It was not even close to being as bad as Batgirl vs. Spider-Gwen. Shadow vs. Mewtwo is in that tier, and it's a way worse episode than Shadow vs. Ryuko. But it also wasn't a Red Hood vs. Winter Soldier. But I would give it a solid 7, maybe on the lower end to me. Because honestly, with so many things I dislike and so many distracting moments, can one kick in the back of Ryuko's head really save the episode? Yes, this scene is amazing, and it was worth the price of admission on its own. Also, the next time is cringe. I forgot to do, like, an outro to this video. Uh, it's not in my script, it's not recorded, I didn't improv something like I normally would if I forget. So this is just, uh, a tacked on extra, what, 30 seconds to say bye. <laughs> you go check out Biffweed's video if you want, that's in the description. Oh my fucking god. I'm not reviewing both Doom and Lex episodes next time as well. Time to end this. Behold my power! Oh, hey! I can do that 